In the first video in this series, we talked about web APIs and introduced ASP.NET Core. And in the last video, we started taking a look at some code and talked about the minimal hosting model. In this video, we're going to bridge the two concepts together and talk about minimal APIs. We talked about how web APIs follow a request response pattern. A client sends a request to a server. The server is responsible for processing that request and sending back a response. In ASP.NET Core, minimal APIs allow us to describe how requests should be processed by a server using an entity known as an endpoint. Minimal APIs provide succinct methods for registering new endpoints to handle incoming requests in our web API. If we take a look at the code, we'll observe the three components that are important for defining how a web request should be handled on line five. Those three elements are the HTTP method, the URL route, and the actual handler that is meant to execute when an incoming request is processed that matches the method and the route. If we take a look at line five, we'll observe that I'm calling the map get method. Get is an HTTP method or verb that indicates that a client is requesting or wanting to get information from a server. The second argument that I care about here is the route pattern. This tells me that whenever a client sends a get request to the forward slash route in my application, then I should execute the logic that is implemented in my handler here. If we take a look at this, we can run our application. We can try this out by running our application using the C-sharp DevKit extension. I'm gonna head over to the top right of my screen and hit run. My application will build and then launch. Here I can observe that I've got a web server that's running and listening on port 5144 for requests coming from any clients. Okay, so my server is running, but where is my client? I could use a web browser to send a request to localhost port 5144 and see my application's response, but I wanna try and show you something new here. Instead, I'm going to use VS Code support for sending HTTP requests via HTTP files so that I can send requests straight from my editor. So to do that, I'm gonna create a new file I'm gonna call it my requests.http. Now I have the ability to send requests to my running HTTP server via this file. All I have to do is indicate the name of the HTTP method that I would like to use. In our case, it's get. And then provide it with a route, which consists of a URL and a path that I want to send my request to. So for us, it's gonna be HTTP localhost, that port number 5144, and it'll be forward slash for our path, great. We can go ahead and select the send request, and we'll see that we've received a response back from the server with hello world, which is the string that we expected it to print. So that's it, we've built our first web API. Not quite, there's a little bit more to do here. To really show you the power of web APIs, I wanna show you what it's like to build an API that follows the CRUD pattern for application development. CRUD is an acronym that stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. And it describes the ways that users can interact with objects in your application. To do this, we're gonna build a sample application that allows our users to create, read, update, and delete items in their to-do list. If you've done web API development before, you might be familiar with this classic to-do example. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna stop my running application, close out these windows, and head back to my program.cs file. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this map get call so that we have a clean playground to write our new API in. Now, I mentioned that our new API is going to be interacting with to-do items in an application. To get started with this, I'm going to implement a type that allows me to represent the to-dos in my application. And I'm gonna do this using a record. If you've watched our beginner C-sharp series, you might be familiar with records as a strategy for defining types in our application. Here, I've used it to define a to-do type that consists of an ID, a name, a due date, 
and an is completed status indicator. So we've got our to-do, but in our API, we want to manage more than just a single to-do. We want to maintain a list of them. So I'm gonna do that by declaring a to-do list variable here, which will capture the to-dos running in our application. Now, it's important to note here that this to-do list is being stored in memory. I'm not saving it to an external database or anything like that. So as soon as I stop my running application server, those to-dos that I've created are wiped out. In a typical application, you'll be instantiating a database to store this data so that it's persisted outside the lifetime of your application server. But to get started, this is fine for now. Great, so we've got a way of representing to-dos in our application and a way of maintaining a list of to-dos in memory. Um, I need to start providing APIs so that users can actually create, read, update, and delete those to-dos, CRUD. And to do that, I'm gonna use that same map HTTP method invocation style that we saw with our hello world method. So let's go ahead and implement our first one. We'll implement a method for creating new to-dos in our application. Now, how does this work? What I've done is I've invoked the map post method. Similar to the map get method, this indicates that I'm trying to register a handler that will react to requests coming into my application via the post HTTP method. And in particular, I care about requests that are being sent to the to-dos path that is running on my application. So whenever a client sends a post request to the to-dos URL in my application, the logic that I've written here is going to run. And what is that logic? Well, it's implemented in this inline function. It says, go ahead and take whatever task has been provided for me and add it to the list of to-dos that I'm maintaining and then return a strongly typed response that says I've created this task. There is just three, four lines of code here, but there's a lot going on under the hood. Let's break it down. First things first, we have this to-do parameter that we're defining as the input to our handler function. What's going on behind the scenes is that minimal APIs will take a look at this parameter, understands that it represents a complex type like a to-do, and try and process that from the body of the request that is sent. Minimal APIs will take care of understanding that request body and deserializing it to a type that you can interact with in your application code. So that's how the inputs are handled. What about the outputs, the response that we send back to the client? HTTP consists of a wide array of status codes that can be represented in the HTTP response. These status codes are numerical values that indicate the status or behavior of the response that was returned. In this particular case, we can see that status code 201 is used to represent a response which says that something was created. You might be familiar with other status codes like 404, which means that something wasn't found, or 500, which says that there was some sort of internal server error, or maybe 401, which says, hey, you're not authorized to view this particular content. So these responses give us tons of meaning about what happened and what was executed. In this particular case, it lets us know, you know, this resulted in the creation of a new object. Great, so that's our post method. Now, the great thing about minimal APIs is we can use the same structure for all of the other endpoints in our application. We have covered being able to create to-dos in our to-do list, but we still have to think about reading and deleting at minimum. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new handler to retrieve to-dos from my list of to-dos based on their ID. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the code for that might look like. All right, there's a lot of code here and there's some squigglies, but we're gonna dig into what all of these are doing. First things first, we have the stuff that we're familiar with. The get here indicates that this is responding to a get request on our server. We have a URL pattern, but there's something interesting going on here. There's this ID parameter that appears to be enclosed in curly braces. And in fact, these curly braces have meaning. They indicate that we're not just looking for the string ID, we're looking for some sort of parameter that is going to be sent as part of the URL. In this case, that parameter might, is going to be an integer that represents the ID of the to-do that we want to resolve. 
Route parameters are a powerful concept that allow you to change the behavior of your route handler based on information that you're getting from your client. In this particular case, our route handler is going to return different information depending on the IDs that it gets in the input. We can see that here that we search through our to-dos list, trying to find a to-do that matches the ID that we received in the client request. If we don't find one, we're going to return a not found response. That's that 404 response that we discussed earlier. And if we do find a to-do that matches the ID that was requested by the user, we're gonna return OK, which is 200 OK. Um, it's a status code that makes us happy. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that there are squiggles all over my code, and that is because I'm using this results type to define that my handler can return one of two things. It can either return an OK response, which will contain a to-do in the body of the response, or it will return a 404. Now, this results object is defined under a special namespace in minimal APIs. And to help me add the required usings for my namespace, I'm gonna go ahead and leverage my completions here and add that using. Great, all of the squigglies are gone. So we've leveled up our application here. We're not just returning a response to the user, we are returning a response based on information provided to us by the client. And route parameters help us retrieve that information. We're also not just returning a single response type. We're returning two. It can either be OK or not found. And this reflects the reality of most complex web APIs. Most of the time, you need to return different information to users based on the events that occurred in your application. You might want to let them know that they haven't logged in and are unauthorized to access a resource, or that something was not found, or that an internal server error occurred and you're not able to process their request. This represents the dynamic nature of web APIs. Um, it's not always one way in, one way out. There's some dynamism there. So that's our map get that helps us resolve to-dos by their ID. Now, it might be helpful just to get a list of all of the to-dos in an application. So we're gonna go ahead and add another endpoint to do just that and get all to-dos. All right, we're back to simpler ones. This is just one line of code that says whenever a user sends a get request to our to-dos route, we're gonna return the to-dos list. What's really neat here is that I'm not using a strongly typed result at all. I'm just returning my to-dos list object directly. And that's because minimal APIs understands how to interpret the return type of the function that you've provided and serialize it correctly in the response. In this case, it knows that to-dos is a list that needs to be serialized and represented as a list of things when it is sent to the client. So far, we've covered how to create route handlers to create new to-dos and to retrieve all of the to-dos in our list or just a single one. There's one more endpoint that I want to add, which is one that supports deleting to-dos given an ID. And we'll go ahead and implement that right here. We can see that it builds on some of the principles that we learned about in earlier endpoints. We've got this ID route parameter that will resolve and represents the ID of the to-do item that we want to delete. We've got this typed results object that we're returning. In this case, it's no content, which is, an item, which is a response with the status code 204, representing that there's no content to return because our to-do item was deleted. Great, so we've implemented all of the endpoints that are related to our application. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at testing our application and making sure that the endpoints that we've defined here behave in the ways that we expect.